In this video, we're going to break down the interface of 3ds Max. All right, so getting started with 3ds Max, the very first time that you open it up, you might get a little overwhelmed with all of the tools, the menus, the buttons, the panels, the, everything that's just going on with this piece of software. Now, there's a good reason for this. 3ds Max is a very robust piece of software. It is used in the TV and film industry. It's used in the games industry, architecture, simulations. It's got lots of things that it can do. So let's go ahead and break it down into manageable chunks so that way we know what we're talking about, where we need to go whenever we start talking about a specific subject. So right here at the top we have the menu bar. Now the menu bar is pretty standard across all pieces of software. It's where most of the commands lie and all of the options and preferences lie. So you're going to be able to uh, manage your, your files like saving files, opening those files and things like that. Now there are other things in this menu bar uh, besides just opening and saving files, uh, but we'll be talking about those as we go throughout this course. Now underneath that we have the toolbar. The toolbar is going to give us quick access to all of the core tools that we're going to be using inside of 3ds Max. So for example, you have undo and redo, you have your linking tools, you have your selection tools, your manipulation tools, and snap tools, and then we have uh, some other miscellaneous tools that go on down through here. We have materials and then even further we have some rendering tools. Um, if you hover over this and you get this little hand on your toolbar, you can drag that left and right um, if that's not showing up on your screen completely. Now below the toolbar we have the ribbon. Now the ribbon is really cool because it gives us a lot of great tools that um, have a very specific purpose. So whenever we're modeling something and we want to add in an edge loop or something like that, uh, we can use the swift loop tool. Now these tools are great for uh, very specific instances and so they're they're tucked away in this ribbon. Now you'll notice that the ribbon itself doesn't have many tools in it and that's because it's context sensitive. And what that means is whenever you have an object selected in your scene, this menu will fill up based on what you have selected. Now beyond the ribbon we have the scene explorer. The scene explorer is going to be invaluable to you because it allows you to see all of your objects that are in your scenes in a list type format. And this is going to be very helpful because it allows us to filter out specific objects whenever we're trying to select things. It allows us to see that in a list view and select those specific objects based on their name. And it also allows us to freeze objects and hide objects. So it's really, really helpful. Now beyond that we have the viewports. The viewports are going to be our window into the 3D scene we're going to be able to maneuver around in our perspective view to look around our object. We're going to be able to see it from different angles. So by default, we'll be able to see it from the top view, from the front view, from the left view, and the perspective view. Now one thing that I want to note about using these viewports is this yellow outline that is around the perspective. This tells us that this is the active viewport. So whenever I click on a viewport, you'll see how that changes. So whenever you're working, know that that means that that is the active viewport. Now beyond the viewports we have the command panel. The command panel is going to be very important to us because it allows us to create or um, do different functions uh, like creating geometry. It allows us to add modifiers to an object. It also allows us to adjust the pivot points of an object. These are all very important whenever it comes to modeling and setting up a CG production. Now there are six different panels inside of the command panel. We have the create panel, the modify panel, the hierarchy panel, the motion panel, the display panel, and the utilities panel. All of these have great uses, but you're going to be using three of those the most. It's going to be the create, modify, and hierarchy. Now motion will come in uh, handy whenever we're working with animations. Display is going to just help us to display options and then we have utilities which have very specific uses. Now we'll be talking more about these as we progress. Now beyond the command panel we have the the animation section and the track bar. The track bar is going to hold all of the different keys that you have placed for your animations. Now they will show up right here on this timeline and we'll be able to scrub through that using this time slider and you'll be able to see the animation happening right inside of your viewport. Now there are, are some tools that, use, uh, that are used to create those keys and they can create keys in a couple of different ways. Now once we get to the animation section we'll talk more about that. We also have the playback controls and then we have the viewport navigation tools. The viewport navigation tools are going to be very helpful because they allow us to 
navigate the viewport as they're easily named but I want to show you how we can navigate the viewport a little bit easier than using these tools because clicking on one and then moving it and then clicking on another and then moving it can be a little cumbersome so what we want to do is we want to learn the keyboard shortcuts of these navigation tools so that way we can start working quickly and efficiently in 3ds max